I'm a Minnesota Wild fan. Yay! Sucks to be me today, but after tonight, bite at St. Louis. <laughs> if they lose again, it's going to be a really different show next week. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> where was I? Oh, yes. I'm to ask you. Well, see, it's weird. I don't really have to ask you to like, subscribe, and or follow because you do like, subscribe, and follow. This is truly news. If you could, if you're a diehard Minnesota Wild fan or any real hockey team fan, if you like the NHL and think the owners are idiots, like, subscribe, and follow. This is true, really news. If you like the NHL and think the owners are not idiots, you don't know how to do any of that, so never mind. <coughs> this is true, really news with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. Nice. Hey, when po- huh. No matter what, it beats the NBA. Well, boy, ain't that the truth. I've decided, if you look at officiating yeah the nba far and away has officials that control the entire game (laughs) yeah and the nhl wanting to be a lot like the nba and in stupid ownership practices are fast approaching that same level meantime when police in the dutch city of utrecht found a barefoot four-year-old boy in pajamas walking down the street the other morning that's not near bentham right no it's not it's in dutchland they took him to the station and gave him hot chocolate because well it's what you do with kids you find wandering it's holland dutch chocolate shortly thereafter a report came in of a vehicle that had been abandoned after hitting two parked cars Officers put two and two together no, and realized they had the hard bitten criminal mastermind already in custody in his jammies. Was he slurping hot chocolate? Yes, he was. Of course he was. (laughs) Apparently the boy woke early as his dad was leaving for work and decided to join the morning's rush hour himself. Police took the boy to meet his parents at the vehicle and asked him if he could show them how it worked. He opened the car. Now, get this. He's four. He opened the car, put the key in the ignition, started the car, moved his left foot to the clutch, and hit the accelerator. <laughs> How? Don't he's know. four. I, but the Dutch are unusually tall. The boy's mother described him well, as... their cars are unusually small. Like, <laughs> highly resourceful, she says. <laughs> yes, he is. No one was injured. Which is not to crash. be confused with highly slassy. <laughs> and police advised the parents to hide their car keys, please. Lock your car, hide your keys. Don't help a four-year-old go bad. When Steve Nichols and John Wynn of Indian Trail, North Carolina, that is a North Carolina name right there. Indian Trail? Where are you from? I'm from Indian Trail, North Carolina. Anyway, Nichols and Wynn saw a TV news story about a dog whose owners abandoned him because they thought he was... (laughs) A dog? They thought he was an alligator. No, they they thought he was homosexual. (sighs) So I, Steve and John went about their business. They had to do something. (laughs) Steve and John are a couple. So they told the Charlotte Observer they drove to to Albemarle, Albemarle, North Carolina. Yeah. Oh, right. They went to adopt a dog. Yeah. Whom they named Oscar after the Irish poet Oscar Wilde. There's gay running through this story. Oscar's pre- fine. Yeah, you can't care. miss it. Oscar's previous owners had surrendered him for for humping another male dog, which Nichols said was one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. That's just pack behavior. See, thank you. Yes. Nichols noted that the dog had been, hadn't been neutered and was suffering from heartworm, which led them to believe that the owner apparently didn't do anything to take care of the animal. Putzes. Well, think about it. it knowing what they know about dogs. I'm concerned yeah. they can take care of themselves. How'd they live this long? See, there are miracles every day. We just don't see. Mm-hmm. There are certain people. That Proof go, of a deity. Uh, and that the deity has a sense of humor. Dark. Sometimes a rather weird one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, Oscar's getting the care he needs now at the couple's home and bonding with their other dog, Harry. Nice. Harry. <laughs> Harry the dog. <laughs> How do they spell that? So help me if it's a chihuahua. <laughs> No, you know what it's going to be. Teach it to say, drop the chalupa. It's going to be a, you'd have to Google that. Yeah. Yeah. A Mexican hairless, don't you? This is Harry. Of course he is. Yep. There you go. In the doctor's office, three quick stories. One, as I leaned in to check her eyes, my older patient got a little frisky. 
You remind me of my third husband, she said coyly. Third husband, I asked. How many have you had? Two. One for the lady right there. <laughs> Went Best office visit ever. <laughs> ever, right? Went to the doctor about um, an anal problem. He's got butt trouble. Oh, yeah, exactly. The doctor put his finger up to check all was okay. I made a slight noise, and he asked if I was okay. And this is when I meant to say, that's okay. But instead, I said, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> worst <laughs> doctor visit ever woman came in for a baby check with her six month old and she had what looked like chocolate milk in the baby's bottle so i started explaining to her as kindly as i could she shouldn't be giving her baby chocolate milk at which point she interrupts and says oh that isn't chocolate milk it's coffee he just loves it best office visit ever in the what? Bedtime? When? Why? What? How? <laughs> mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, mama, dada. No, honest. He's only six months old and he's already learned to climb up the curtains and out the window. We think he's spider baby. In the London neighborhood of Richmond, an unusual property that's been dubbed the invisible house is attracting attention. How? No one can see Or it. flying under the radar of yeah. passersby. According to my London and be my London.com, I'm guessing. Oh, sure. Well, the front of the home sits on a busy thoroughfare and is almost completely covered with one-way mirrored glass. Oh. So it reflects the roundabout across the road sure. and the busy sidewalk in front. Okay. The family who wanted to remain anonymous, well, <laughs> going to extreme lengths, I bet they're superheroes. Likely. Yeah. Probably the Incredibles. Said that, no, they wouldn't live in Britain. How do you know? They're incredible. Okay, then here. maybe... The Incredibles. That might be closer. <laughs> Barney. Um, where was I? The family, anonymous, said the architect wanted, wanted the mirror to, quote, make the house talk with its environment. Well, he, tell him to become a ventriloquist. I wonder if he's got say. a dog named Harry. We really liked the idea and ran with it. The back of the house sits on a quiet lane and features traditional architecture. <laughs> a stealth freaking house. Vladdy, we need pictures. Yeah, yeah. Could you just nip over to London? I think it's only five hours away by train. Well, Richmond, actually, the Richmond section of London, if you could. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. See, I mean, you what else you got to do, really? Help a brother out, man. What do you bet we're going to get another? He's just going to oh. find it on Google Maps or something, a picture of the house and send it to us. And the history of the entire Richmond area. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> this is true. Really news. Send email to TITR at netradio.network. <laughs>